Okay, so this is the name here. It's, it's called Crazy Black Hebrew Israelites Hate Mongering on the Streets Competition. It's about 30 minutes long. I can't play the entire video, but you get my point. They're a hate group. They're crazy. They're out of, they're out of control. Slavery was the foundation of American wealth, especially in the South. And the prosperity of these regions was closely linked with mass market cash crops like sugarcane, cotton and tobacco. But these were extremely labour intensive. Slavery enabled the settlers to harvest the wealth of their new nation. And all it took was a tweaking of their consciences and some twisting of their Christian beliefs. It's true that Christianity was used as a weapon to uh, justify uh, the enslavement of African people. It's true that Christianity was used as uh, a weapon to uh, justify uh, the enslavement of African people. Christianity over the centuries has been used uh, by many people to justify acts that uh, are very unchristian. The Africans were regarded as property without any more rights than a chair. In practice, this meant they could be beaten by their owners and forced into back-breaking work. Take a moment to imagine living like this. Going out to the fields every day and returning to this one dark room every night. Your entire family lives here, but you don't even have control of your own bodies. Any one of you can be sold off at any time. Do you have a sister? or a daughter, slave owners often sold off young girls to be the breeders of the next generation of slaves. Enslaved people weren't just physically defenseless, they were emotionally vulnerable as well. Slaves were denied any right that might confuse their status as property. They couldn't marry, they weren't allowed to learn to read, they essentially couldn't harbour any ambition for a future. Slave owners employed a range of means to assert control, including legislation and violence. They also used religion. White plantation owners read the Bible in a highly selective and frankly warped way. They plucked at verses to justify not only owning other human beings, but treating them no better, and in some cases far worse, than their farm animals. Secretly reading the Bible confirmed what they'd suspected. Slavery was wrong, and God was a God of justice who would judge their white oppressors. The corrupt, slaveholding, woman whipping, cradle plundering, partial and hypocritical Christianity of the land. Published Uncle Tom's Cabin, the best selling novel of the 19th century. It gave many people their first real view of slavery and sent shockwaves through American society. A slave warehouse. There you'll find an abundance of husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, and small children. To be sold separately or in lots to suit the convenience of the purchaser. And that immortal soul can be sold, leased, mortgaged, exchanged for groceries or dry goods to suit the phases of trade or the fancy of the purchaser. And God I want to give God all the praises just. and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, Sasir Shalom to you other followers of the truth, and let me say Shalom to the elect. I want to go into this video here I came across um, actually I was going into a video dealing with um, how they was uh, calling us evil as uh, Hebrew Israelites but then um, we see that the um, Christian, Christian Christianism as we call it today Christianity um, we can see the foul behavior that they had and what they actually done we haven't done any of these things these Christians have done. Now we do know that everything starts from a root. How do we follow Christmas? How do we follow what we follow? How are we doing the things we're doing? Hang tight, later in the, le later in the lesson I'll get into that as well. 
through an article I pulled up, which we know, but I just pulled it up. So I just wanted to touch more on that. I wanted to go into uh, the curses of um, which proves that we're the biblical Israelites. And uh, as a lot of people will say, well, I wouldn't follow Christianity because Christianity was um, was used to destroy our people, right? Which it was, but they didn't really need the book to do that. But they knew we was, you know, closer to the Most High. They knew this. We did more prayers and more works and more, even on the left hand side, of wickedness, sacrificing. Because some of us continued. Some of us didn't believe in Yahweh Shah. Some of us left and started following their own practices, but we still knew, you know, kept that Hebrew, you know. So this man came into power, and the Most High said, "Well, you know what? This is what I'll do to you." And this was pre-written, okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15 first, okay. It says, um. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, thy power, to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You know, there's quite a few. Curse shalt thou be in a city. Curse shalt thou be in a field. When you go into work, you know, when you come out off of work, you go into your house. Curse shalt thou be in the basket of thy store. <clears throat> we don't even own the stores. These stores ain't owned by us. So we're cursed every time you go into a store that's not owned by you, your own people, so to speak. Everybody else has theirs. We don't. So that's a curse when you go in, going in and curse when you're coming out uh, and, uh, of that basket in that store, too. Okay? We can read on and on in the... Um, scriptures of the of the curses but I want to just get a couple Deuteronomy 28 23 I mean we can go to 28 28 she'd be blinded with madness astonishment which means stupefied um, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron that's when they used now you, you see this Bible is a powerful book and has a lot of history, knowledge, wisdom. You get somebody take a hold of this book that is evil. Can you imagine the things that they would do with this book and how they would use it? And it's not just a book, but the words of the Most High. And the Most High, in a tricky sense, allowed them to use it and come against us and do what he does because it's his show. So you can't get around that. So the precept to that is, well, you keep reading, verse 48, Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and he and in want of all things. This is why we blowing each other away. This is why they put these great wrappers up with these nice shoes, right? And these nice clothes and the nice cars and the fronts and the diamonds. And I already know that these people have talent and they're willing to sell their, themselves for that, for that style and you're going to want it and you're not going to be able to get it and then that's when that hatred and that hating spirit starts you know everybody has it in them some form of time one or another right um, it goes on to say and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. <clears throat> now you'll have people because the Bible talks of allegories and parables. This is real talk here, man. This is the real deal. We had the yoke of iron. We had the shackles. We went through all that. What they didn't know when they was bringing us into slavery and they was doing what they was doing is fulfilling the prophecy that the Most High uh, bestowed on Moses. Right? The first five books. You know, well, let me say the book of the Bible that he was, you know, these are the prophecies that was going to come to pass. So we can see Christianity 
Oh, let me go to this site here. Let me go to here. Um, you had this guy, Robert E. Lee, who James White looks up to, who has slave owners. You have Vocab Malone, who, who goes to the Calvinist, Calvinism, John Calvin, who burnt Israelites at the stake. Anybody who didn't follow his doctrine. So the Reformationists, they got together with, uh, against the Roman Catholics and went out in droves and conquered um, the Israelites in West Africa and in Spain. That was after the Israelites, by the way. That's why they only went into those, mainly those locations. Right? They have went to other places too because they wanted to dominate the world. But it's mainly about getting you Jake as we see today it's always about getting you Jake you Jake can't get anything you can't get jobs you know you can't get it you, you're not going to be a millionaire unless you do what you have to do or do what they tell you to do but they're sure willing to give you anything else that is destructive to you anyway uh, let me get to the point um, it says this is why did so many Christians support slavery? They went in some books of the Bible um, and bought the Christian out, service, obey your masters, and so forth. But they went and took it on other levels. Charitable and, and, and evangelistic reasons. Slavery removes people from a culture that worshipped the devil, practicing witchcraft and sorcery and other evils. So when they went, this is another thing, when they went into the, the West Africa, they saw that some Af West African Israelites, we were um, doing sacrifices and things of that nature. And um, where Yahweh was the ultimate sacrifice, which when the, the Renaissance came in, when they came in power, this man didn't know very much. He was really taught by Jake anyway. So they took and adopted what they had when they came into power and then used it as a tool against us. That's all they did. It says slavery brings heathens to Christian, to a Christian land where they can hear the gospel. So you mean to tell me they went to Africa, Spain, various other places, and and what they have done is they have uh, paid off Christians or they've stole slaves, took them back, brainwashed them so to speak, fed them, made them feel good, and then have them come back and preach the gospel. This is where all your preachers and your evangelists come from. You want to know the root of it? It all goes back to slavery. This is why they said you got you go into the inner city, you see a church on uh, uh, different corners in the inner city. So you can't say the past has nothing to do with the present. It has everything to do with why our people are the way they are. Right? So in that time you had different uh, plantations wh who had um, these uh, pastors set up to teach them the Bible the so-called right way. And this is what they do. This is why Vocab Malone, he needs... A, a Jake look see they understand that you need somebody who looks like you to get the message across they're not going to do it you know the president knows not to go run into the inner city and start preaching in the church they set up people to do that for them anyway it says Christians masters provide a religious instruction for their slaves they just took it and ran all the way with it man but that was the way you were supposed to treat your slaves too. And never said, uh, uh, let them hang for days on end. You're lynching them and let them hang for days on end. Right? It is slaveholders own interest to treat their slaves well. Slaves are treated more benevolently than our workers uh, oppressive northern, northern factory. So, we see the same thing. We see the politicians. We see what's happening. That, you know, Jake is being treated well. Jake has got a nice place. Jake is doing things. But ultimately, he's still oppressed. 
right? This is what they're saying. Um, slave on the, uh, so then you had the abolitionists who, who so-called wanted to abolish slavery. They never really wanted to abolish it when you do the research. They just wanted to abolish the kind of slavery that was going on so they could take, and um, let me say, they could take slaves that was uh, less, who had less of, let me say, they might have had less of uh, some form of dignity with themselves or maturity, and then they took them up to um, the north and they taught them how to be better um, how to be better people so to speak civilized that's the word I'm looking for they took the uncivilized and they made them civilized because you had civilized up the north more was uh, than the civil you know you had the so called uncivilized in the south them um the wicked in the south was very wretched right they was wretched but it's you know slavery is slavery, no matter how you look at it. So you know this woman uh, Harriet Tubman, she was also set up by the Quakers, right? You do the research. She was set up by the Quakers. She had men go with her. They, she even gave her weapons, and it was really just like taken from Burger King to give to McDonald's, right? It was all about business. It was all about property, you know. And if you can make the slaves want to go somewhere better and you treat it right, why wouldn't they go? Of course they would. Anybody would. So the 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 slaves from the the, the slave owners from the south would go up north and kidnap <laughs> and bring them back. And then you had to set up these underground railroads to um to get them back. That's just a, a whole new other story, another video. I just wanted to get on the understanding of um, this stuff with these uh, the, the Christians and how it was all based these churches you see, Christianity you see is all based off corruption slavery and evilness, okay, Joel 3 and 1 for behold the days come and the time behold in those days and in that time when thou shalt bring again the captivity of Judah, Jerusalem I will also gather all nations and bring them down in the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shaphat, Yahweh's judgment, and will plead with them there for my people and my heritage, Israel, talking about the Israelites, who we have scattered amongst the nations and parted my land. Who did that? Well, you got to say it. We, you know who did that. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for, they might, uh, for wine that they might drink. Yea, what, what, and what ye have to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine, will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedy, speedily, will I re return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and carried into, carried into my temples my goodly pleasant things. Thou the children of Judah also, also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold to the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border behold I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them you can go to Isaiah I think 11 and 11 and I will return your recompense upon your own head and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the, uh, the children of Jerusalem okay uh, of Judah and Jerusalem and sell them to the Sabians and the people far off for the Lord has spoken it so ultimately, uh, um, what was done to us, you, the Most High is saying what was done to the children of Israel is also going to be done to the people who did it. This is Jeremiah 30 and 16 as well. You know, all they that devoured thee, every one of them, shall uh, have recompense. You know, anyway, that's all I have on that. I just wanted to touch on this uh, quick topic about Christianity and the evilness that it uh, is spawned through that. That's all I have on that show.